For this example, we're going to express the following in partial fraction. So for the first step, we check whether this fraction proper or improper. As we can see, numerator is constant. When denominator part here, we expand x to the x plus 1, it will be a quadratic. So constant over quadratic, it will be a proper fraction. So means this fraction can straight forward, continue to the part to do partial fractions. So secondly, we are going to check is it our denominator factorized completely. So for this question, it already factorized. So it is proper. Number two, the denominator part is already in factorized completely. So number three, For step number three, we're going to split the factor from the denominator. So the factor here, we will have x and another factor here is x plus 1. So for x, it is a linear. So for numerical part, it's supposed to be a proper fraction. So the polynomial that's less than linear, it will be a constant. So I will denote it here as a. Repeat for here also a linear factor. So for numerator, it might be a smaller ranking from linear. So it will go to lean constant. So I will denote it with B. So this is our step number three and number four. So step number five, we're going to equate the numerator. So as this is our proper fraction and this is our partial fractions. So combine of these two partial fractions, we will go back to our proper fractions here. So for here means that the numerator for 2, it will be product of a times x plus 1 and b times x. When we get same to the back to the denominator, you will notice that a will time x plus 1. So b will time x. So this complete fraction in numerator part will be equal back to the value of 2 or in other way for easier we can see for this partial fraction partially a fraction here so it will times with the factor that it don't have so for another partial fraction here it will times with the factor that it don't have which is x so after we equate our numerator here after we forming this equation then we're going to find out what is our unknown a and b so we have two unknown here means we need to uh, produce two equations here to find what is our a and b simultaneously so we will let we will use the method of let so we'll let the value of x to be the zeros so you can find what is our roots here it will be more easier for us to form out the equation and find the unknown. So from here we can see x is negative 1. We can use any numbers, but if you're not using the zeros or the roots from the factor here, so you're forming a simultaneous equation. If I'm using the zeros from the factor, like x negative 1, so automatically it will be eliminate the constant a I can find for b. So when I substitute x equals to negative 1 inside this equation, you will notice that because this is a 0 from this factor, so this part will be 0, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So straight away, I can get b times negative 1. So when I solving a and b, I will be easier using the value of x is come from the uh, factor. So b here is negative 1 over 2. Uh, divide by negative 1, this is negative 2. Okay, so continue. We can let another roots here. What's your another roots? As you can see, this is one of the roots. So our another roots x value is 0. When we substitute here, 2 will be equals to 0 plus 1, a. Then 0 is the roots from this factor. So that's why this part will be become 0. So a will be equal, equals to 2. After we finding our a and b, lastly, we are going to substitute back into our partial 
subtraction. So A will be equals to 2. B will be equals to negative 2. So as negative and positive, it will become negative. So this is what we mean. A proper fraction can be expressed into a partial fraction. So this is one part of the fraction. This is one part of the fraction. When we combine back this, when we get same to the denominator, we combine these two partial fraction. Actually, we can get back uh, this original partial, this original proper fractions. For question B, so we can repeat the step. For the first step, we check whether it is a proper fraction. So this is linear. Numerator is a linear. Quadratic is a uh, denominator is a quadratic. So this linear is smaller than quadratic. So it is proper. Secondly, we have to make sure our denominator is factorized completely. So for this denominator, for this dx, dy, it haven't factorized completely. So we have to factorize it completely first. It will give us a factor of x plus 3 and x minus 2. So this is our second step. Third step. We're going to split our fraction by its factor. So our proper fractions here with denominator x plus 3x minus 2, we're going to form out the partial fraction by splitting out the factor from the denominator. So from the denominator here, we can see we have a factor of x plus 3. So this is one of the partial fractions. Another partial fraction will be x minus 2. Then after that, we continue to step number 4, which is we're going to identify what's supposed to write here. So when we have linear, make sure our numerator always smaller than denominator. So when we have linear at denominator, so the smaller will be constant. So I will put a constant a. So this also a linear factor. So numerator will be a smaller ranking. So it will be a constant b. So after that, step number five, we're going to find form out. We equal, we equate the numerator so that we can form out an equation about our numerator here. So 5x can be equals back for a going to time x minus 2. So x plus 2, x plus 3 is a factor for this, for its, so itself. So it's going to multiply with x minus 2. So a also going to uh, multiply with x minus 2. Meanwhile, for b, it will going to multiply with x plus 3. So this is the equation then continue we're going to find out what is your a and b so we can use the method of let let x equals to 2 so that i can make this factor to be 0 i manage to get b so substitute we have 10 here 2 plus 3 is 5b so b is 2 so I have to let another time because we have two unknown, we have to let it, we have to do it twice. So let for another value of x, we can find it from our factor here. Our factor here, we can find our x value to be negative 3, means that later when we substitute, this part will be 0. So we can find the unknown a. So 5 times negative 3, negative 15. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 5a. So a will be 3. So after we finding our a and b, lastly we have to express back, substitute back into our partial fractions here. So express our fraction, the proper fractions here can be equals to its partial fraction. One part of the fraction will be 3 over x plus 3 and then 2 over x minus 2.